Meeting well, Shalom with Orkojita, Nicho Dash, and Ritika Pal. On to the next slide. These are the contents of our uh, presentation, which includes introduction, uh, why DPGA matters, DFA tuples, examples, acceptance and types, and conclusion. On to the next slide. A puja on automata is a way to implement a, con a context free grammar. In a similar way, we design DFA for a regular grammar. A DFA can remember a finite amount of information, but a PGA can remember infinite amount of information. Basically, a push down autom automation is a finite state machine plus a stack. A push down automation has three components an input tape, a control unit, and a stack with infinite size. The stack hit, uh, scans the top uh, symbol of the stack. A stack uh, does uh, two operations, mainly two operations push and pop. A push operation is a symbol is added at the top. And a pop operation is the top symbol is read and removed as we can see in this uh, diagram. So this is the uh, formal definition. So a TDA tuples is a formally defined by seven tuples. So first, if we remember the final automata was defined using five tuples so but in in this case of uh, pda it's uh, it is designed by seven tuples so let's see uh, what this tuples uh, means so first here is q yeah, it is a uh, it is same as a formal uh, formal auto uh, finite automata it is a set of states and same as uh, sigma sigma is a finite finite state of input uh, the in input symbol this is also same like finite automata and then in the uppercase gamma gamma is a set of push down symbols which can push and pop from stack uh, mainly the mainly the stack uh, stack is uh, varied for the it has a um, uh, it is a more powerful tool than the finite machine and q0 uh, we also know the in the uh, previous uh, in the previous finite automata that uh, it is a st initial state and z is a initial push down symbol z0 and it, it also defined as a uh, dollar sign and last f is a set of final final states and what is the acceptance and types the so push down automata will accept two types uh, first one is final state and second one is empty stack so after uh, reading all inputs uh, re and uh, then reaching the final state uh, it also called a final state and when the uh, after reading when the stack is empty then uh, then we call the empty stack so in this diagram first uh, first uh, the Q1 is the initial state and the Q4 is the uh, final state. So first epsilon is denoted by an input symbol and epsilon tends to uh, dollar sign. Uh, it, it, it's a stack symbol. So uh, stack symbol uh, here epsilon is uh, here. This means that it is a uh, epsilon means the neither read or popped. Uh, here uh, we represent the Z0. Z so Z0 as a design we say uh, is a um, dollar sign so after that we see the dollar sign it means nothing is pushed and so this is the push down automata diagram so next slide please and what is the deterministic push down automata uh, short scene uh, dpda uh, in automata theory uh, dpda is a vari variation of the push down automata and dpd accepts the deterministic context free grammar a proper set of context free language but uh, not all context free language are deterministic some uh, uh, dpda uh, ha has a, 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 at most one legal transaction uh, transition for the same combination of input symbol state and top stack symbol and diagram and i am going to verify that whether the diagram is a DPD or an NDP. As you can see in this diagram, it is an initial state and the final state from which we are we are going to read the input. As you can see in this diagram, the uh, F silent transition is allowable because no other transition in this state use the input symbol C. And the uh, F silent transition is allowable uh, because the state use the stack symbol Z. And you can also see in case of DPD also, uh, it only have on only one unique uh, next state and it is also following this, those properties so we can clearly say it is an example of dpd moving ahead with the next slide why dpd is matter because dpd are deterministic and they are simultaneously efficient uh, they keep track on the to top of the stack they store action and go to table that says the operation to be performed on the stack and whether the state enter uh, in each input or in input pair Loop over the input and processing the input pairs until the automaton rejects. If 
you can find a DPT in your CFL, then we can recognize the screen in that language. If you now moving ahead with the next slide. Uh, I mean, this slide I'm going to explain. Uh, I'm going to construct a Poisson automata, which will be accepting n numbers of a and n numbers of b, and the value of n will be greater than one. So, so to simplify the problem, we can say that uh, we are taking a screen which will be having equal number of a and b, and the number of a and b will be n. Uh, to construct this automata, we will be uh, taking, we will be using a stack, and uh, if we read and read a read a value of a in the screen, then we will push that value, and if I if we read the value of b, we will be popping the value of a. As you can see in this diagram, q0 is the initial state, and qf is the final state. Uh, if I if I give an input of b, a silent will be a, the value of a will be popped, and if I give an input of a, uh, the a silent will be popped and the value of a will be pushed. In case of in case we give an input of b, uh, a silent will be a will be popped and a uh, silent will be pushed. And after that, uh, we will get the final state. Now moving ahead with the next uh, slide. This is a transition diagram I have already ex explained to you. And let us take two examples and check whether the screens are getting verified or get rejected. Uh, for the first example, I am having a a a b b. Uh, it is we can see that it is having equal number of a and equal number of b. Uh, initially, we will post z0 in the stack to check that whether the stack is empty or not. And after that, we will we'll read through the screen. At first, we will post a. And after that, we will post another one a. And a will be present in the top of the stack. And after that, if we read the value of b, a will be popped out. And uh, a will be again popped out in the second, uh, second b. As you can see in the last part of the, uh, at last part, the uh, stack will be empty as Riti already mentioned. If we get the stack as empty, the screen will be accepted. Now, moving ahead to the next example. Uh, next example, I have my screen is ABA, and at first, we will be pushing the value of Z0, and after that, we will be pushing A, and after that, if we read the value of A, A will be popped, and after that, we will be again pushing A. As you can see in the last portion of the, as you can see in the last, after reading the last element of the screen, we are not getting an empty stack. That's why it will be rejected. Now moving ahead to the next slide. Uh, this is an example of weight level question. Which of the following pair have different expressive power? Uh, and it will be DPTA and non deterministic automata because NDPA can handle languages of grammars with ambiguity, but DPTA can't handle the languages with ambiguity and any CFL language, CFL grammar. Thank you everyone. This is all from my side. Now my group member, Orbajita, will continue. Thank you, Nitya. Good afternoon, sir. Myself, Opposite. So, now I will start with this topic construction of DPD. So, some string will come followed by 1C followed by reverse of the string before C. So, you get to know that C will uh, work as an alarm to starting uh, popping stack. So, we will uh, pop every A with a, a and every B with B. For every two A's and B, uh, uh, push. Uh, they mean to stack. So when C comes, we'll do nothing starting popping stack A for A and B for B. So we can see in that diagram. So coming to the next slide. So now uh, from here, uh, I will conclude our, our presentation. So DPDA is updated version of FSM, uh, which, which is can solve more complex problems as it is uh, holding extra memory in stack and also uses context uh, free grammar and at most one such transition action is possible in a uh, case of uh, DPDA is less uh, powerful than in NDP and it can be used for syntax analysis for compiler stack uh, operations and uh, tower of uh, any problem. So coming to, moving to the next slide. So there is a great uh, level uh, MCQ that considered the following languages over the alphabet. So here uh, WF is the reverse of the string W. Which uh, of these languages are uh, here uh, WR is the reverse of the string W. Which of these languages are uh, deterministic context free languages? So A none of the languages only L1, C, L1 and L2 all, uh, all the three uh, languages. Uh, 
uh, context free languages, none of the languages, only L1 and L2. So moving on to the next slide. So here is a uh, so explanation for L1 and L2. We can design deterministic Poisson automata, so both are deep. And for L1 and L2, we can design deterministic Poisson automata, so both are uh, ECF. So, uh, but for L3, it is not possible to design deterministic PDA because the PDA cannot determine whether W ends exactly, so it would uh, start popping symbols from the stack. So therefore, option C is correct, CFA. But uh, for L3, it is uh, not possible to uh, design deterministic PDA because uh, the PDA cannot determine um, where W ends exactly, so it would be start popping symbols from the stack. So therefore, option C is correct. So moving on to the next slide. So uh, here are uh, our resource, um, resources where we collect uh, information for our uh, PPT. So this is all from our side. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving us this opportunity. Thank you. Very good presentation. Okay. Very good presentation.